and I wanted to go to Egypt so that I could see the pyramids for myself and assess the idea that these structures were used to produce electricity, which is the most popular theory about the function of the Great Pyramid. However, as I began to explore the sites, specifically a location known as Abu Sir and the Pyramid of Neferkare, we were exploring the site and I found this red quartzite collection bowl and conduit system that runs from the pyramid itself underneath this huge floor of black basalt into this collection bowl. Mm -hmm. And that's when I began to develop the idea that they were producing and collecting aqueous solutions of chemicals. So generally speaking, my theory is that the Egyptian pyramids are a series of chemical reactors that were designed to produce at least a half dozen different chemicals in series. But they were powered by electric fields coming from lightning, which I'm sure we'll get to here in a little bit. So overall, that's my theory, is that the Egyptian pyramids were designed for chemical engineering and chemical manufacturing. So what made you come to this conclusion about them being chemical processors and the bowls being collectors of chemicals? Did you, do you have a background in chemistry? No. So I have a degree in psychology and a minor in Spanish and just sort of a lifelong passion for chemistry and physics. And I was really inspired by first the collection bowl in Abu Sir. And then our next expedition was to go inside of the Red Pyramid of Dashur. And as soon as I went down into these reaction chambers, I noticed that there was chemical staining all over the walls inside of the Red Pyramid, mm -hmm. which was very, very unusual. And typically the explanation for the staining is that it's somehow caused by bats. And I knew immediately when I heard that explanation that that was, there's no way that was the actual explanation for what's causing this staining. And fast forward now five years later, we have a chemical analysis from samples of that staining that were taken from the walls of the chambers that conclusively prove it has absolutely nothing to do with bats. It is extrusions of metal compounds that are coming out of the stone itself due to high temperature reactions occurring inside of these chambers and fluctuations in temperature and pressure. So you got to imagine like a sponge, right? Squeezing out liquid material. So the stone itself has to be heated to a high enough temperature to be able to liquefy these compounds. And there has to be fluctuations of pressure inside of the structure that cause these extrusions to come out of the stone. So that was the first thing I noticed inside of the Red Pyramid that began to inspire the idea that these were designed for chemical reactions. The next thing inside the Red Pyramid is as you go through the sequence of chambers, so you get down the entry shaft, you're in the first chamber, and you'll immediately notice the smell of ammonia. Now, this smell of ammonia is typically explained as also being from bats. But my wife and I, we've been in plenty of other structures in Egypt that have tons of bats inside them. And the smell inside of these chambers, for example, Mastaba 17 in the Fayum Oasis, is filled with bats. And it smells like what you would imagine a cage full of rodents would smell like, mm. right? Just imagine what that would smell. That's what, what a bat cave smells like. We've also been inside the tomb of the birds, which is this underground tunnel network that runs below the Giza Plateau, a very rarely discussed feature of the Giza Plateau that is critical to how this system operated. And it's basically a, a, a leach mining tunnel that was used to use acidic solutions that flowed through this tunnel to extract the metallic ore deposits that are inside of the Tomb of the Birds. Hmm. But it's a bat cave now, and there's tons of bats that live in there. And again, it smells like a rodent cage. But inside of the Red Pyramid of Dashur... And you've been down there? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's technically what you would say an off-limits or forbidden area of the Giza Plateau, but I have videos on my channel, uh, The Land of Chem, C-H-E-M, of us going down inside the Tomb of the Birds and, so and these are channels that run underground through the Giza Plateau? Correct. Yeah, yeah. So How big are we talking? Like So it's a it's a pretty large again, you know, it, the the diameter of the opening of the tunnel is probably 15 feet by 15 feet. Oh wow. So it's a huge tunnel system that runs from one side of the Giza Plateau directly toward and underneath the central pyramid of Giza. And these tunnels have been known about since antiquity. And the Roman explorers that were investigating the Giza Plateau called these things syringes. 
And the original name for the Giza Plateau is Rostau, which, mean, which means mouth of the passages. So there's all of this nomenclature in regard to the Giza Plateau that is indicative of the knowledge of these underground metallic ore binding tunnels. And we did have an opportunity to go inside of this thing, and it was pretty wild because this whole tunnel is filled with iron ore deposits. And we also have chemical analysis that's been taken from a variety of sample locations across the Giza Plateau of these iron ore deposits, which nobody ever talks about these things, but they're a critical part of the operation of the Giza Plateau. Is this a photo of them? So this is actually the Osiris shaft, oh, okay. um, which we've also been in down, down inside the Osiris shaft, which is another underground chamber system mm -hmm. running below the Giza Plateau. This one is below the causeway of the Central Pyramid. But um, I do have some, some videos on my channel showing the inside of the Tomb of the Birds. So, but after this experience inside the Red Pyramid of Dashur, seeing the chemical staining and smelling this, it is pure ammonia. Again, we have those smelling, yeah, sal yeah, yeah. smelling salts over there. <laughs> and it's, it's the exact same experience. Mm -hmm. So you start in the... Uh, no. You sure it's the same? <laughs> Let's take a whiff here and we can see. There it's you go, it's brother. it's very it's very similar, <laughs> and it's it's definitely not from bats. It is a completely different smell. It is pure chemical ammonia, okay. as if you were to take a jug of ammonia of cleaning solution from underneath your kitchen counter, put your nose in it, and smell it. Mm -hmm. And it gets progressively stronger as you pass through the three chambers. So you get into the first one, the smell of ammonia is a little weak. You get into the secondary reaction chamber and it gets stronger. Mm -hmm. And then as you climb the stairs to ascend into the final synthesis chamber, the smell of ammonia is staggering. It's like putting your nose inside of that, Oof. inside of this final synthesis chamber. And in my opinion, you know, bats don't have a coordinated strategy for their urination plan. And they're all going to decide just to go into this one chamber and pee inside of this one chamber. Right. And people also say that it's because of the guards going down there and urinating. And I can assure you, it takes it takes a good ten minutes to get down the shaft into the red pyramid. It's a it's a very laborious process to get down inside of these pyramid structures. Mm -hmm. And if you have to take a leak, you're just going to do it on the outside of the pyramid because it's a heck of a lot easier just to pee off the side of this thing mm -hmm. or go into the desert as opposed to crawling down inside of the chambers. So that's um that is a fallacious explanation of the cause of the staining and the smell of ammonia. And again, now we have chemical analysis, thanks to my colleagues at the Acida Project, where they took uh, probably hundreds of samples back in 2010 mm -hmm. of a variety of different things throughout Egypt and all of the ancient structures around there. And they did chemical analysis of all this stuff. So we actually have some detailed information about exactly what these compounds are that are on the walls of the Red Pyramid. So it's definitely not from bats. So... Yes. Can you explain your hypothesis in a nutshell? Basically, you think that the the red pyramid was manufacturing chemicals for what purpose? And what was the function of the other two pyramids? Yes. Now, how did the whole thing work? Okay, so there are two major pyramids in Dashur, the red pyramid and the bent pyramid. Okay. We also have the step pyramid of Saqqara. And then there are three different major pyramids on the Giza Plateau. There's actually 12 pyramids on the Giza Plateau. So there's a lot more than just the Great Pyramid up there. Okay. So let's start with the Red Pyramid. Okay. Ammonia is by far the most important chemical that we have synthesized in the modern day. So during the Industrial Revolution, chemical manufacturing on an industrial scale was being developed as a legitimate science. And one of the first chemicals that we synthesized on an industrial scale was ammonia. And ammonia is one of the most important chemicals that we use today for fertilizers. It completely transformed the modern world being able to manufacture massive scale of fertilizer in terms of population expansion and everything that we've seen in the development of the modern day is literally dedicated and dependent on our production of ammonia still to this day. We use ammonia-based fertilizers because it has a very high content of nitrogen. So the two pyramids in Dashur, the primary function for these two chemicals, which is ammonia and ammonium bicarbonate, is for fertilizer production. You got to feed the people. So I do believe that there was a massive civilization that lived in the upper eastern corner of Africa, basically what we know today as Egypt, mm -hmm. and fertilizers would have been a huge part of what they were producing in terms of the chemical supply that they had. 